First, I will end Kamala Harris's anti-energy crusade and implement a policy of energy abundance, energy independence, and even energy dominance. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country. My plan will cut energy prices in half or more than that within 12 months of taking office. Energy was what caused our problem initially. Energy is going to bring us back. All right, there you have it. That's with Trump New York Economic Club luncheon today. Joining us, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. Governor Burgum, first of all, thank you for a superhuman effort to help us on the show. We appreciate it. And I'll just toss it out to you. You've talked to uh, President Trump many, many, many times. Two dollars gas, cut energy costs in half. Can it be done, Governor? Well, absolutely it can, and it can be done uh, with President Trump back in office. Uh, his uh, speech today was fantastic. He hit on, on every button you need to achieve energy dominance, which is not, it's, it's cutting regulation. Uh, it's opening up uh, the ability for states and private companies to develop their minerals. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to, uh, to do what, what other countries have done, take Norway, uh, even take Alaska with their own uh, in North Dakota. We're building up these legacy funds, Southern Wealth Funds. Uh, this is the path to prosperity for America. And as he just said in the clip you played, President Trump understands that energy was what underlied the driving up the cost of inflation. It's also key to national security. It's emboldened our competitors and our adversaries like Russia and Iran, who are funding wars against us. Uh, he totally gets it. Uh, this is super exciting. I feel like he won the election today with his speech. Mm. Governor Bergham, you know, sometimes people don't understand how important, like, petroleum-related products permeate the entire economy, affecting consumer goods, health care, pharmaceuticals, operating rooms. There's like hundreds of products that are impacted by the cost uh, of petroleum. And so if you can drive these prices down by producing more oil and gas, that is a key to inflation. I mean, I don't think folks necessarily understand that as well as you do. Well, if any of your viewers today, at, whether they're at the home, they're in their office, they're uh, you know watching somewhere. If you take a look around at the products that you're you're sitting on, you're wearing, you're touching, uh, you know anything that anything that you're looking at has got an energy component to it, and whether that's strictly a component that came from a petroleum product or whether it was the energy to make that product, and so it is fun. It's uh, just fundamental. It's foundational, and of course, uh, combined with the energy dominance, combined with the tax policies and cutting. The, the regulations, you know, this is going to bring capital, capital flows to the place where it's going to get the highest return. And what he's describing is what many red states have done. It's what he did when he was president. But if you look at where people are moving to in our country, they're moving to red states. Red states have lower taxes, less regulation. And, and if you take a look at the states that are really thriving right now, a lot of those are red state energy states, uh, like North Dakota, where we've got the highest GDP growth in the country, in spite of the Biden administration, where we're currently fighting the Biden administration administration, the Harris administration, on 30 different federal rulemaking efforts mm. that are trying to restrict U.S. energy. You know, one of the other points he's making is that the misnamed Inflation Reduction Act has to go. I mean, that thing is now scored at over a trillion dollars, as I think you know. And it's just chock full of all these Green New Deal subsidies and electric vehicle subsidies and no time limits on that. And he mentioned the Elon, potential Elon Musk Efficiency Commission and so forth. But, I mean, he's going to go right after that as a means of cutting the budget. And I don't think he's ever been quite as explicit, Governor Burgum. People who have questioned his budget-cutting credentials, I don't think they should. I think he laid it out pretty good today. He was very clear, and it's very smart what he described, uh, because the Inflation uh, Reduction Act was exactly the opposite. It was the Inflation Creation Act, and, and those uh, subsidies were one of the largest and most massive misallocations of capital we've ever seen. They moved towards towards things that were completely uneconomic. Uh, you talk the EV subsidies basically was tying our future to buying batteries from China and doing it at a cost of, of 10 to 15 times for every ton of CO2 avoided versus what we could do with, with conventional methods here with liquid, en liquid uh, fueled engines in America, the internal combustion machine. 
which again, we, we need for aviation, we need for transportation, we need for farming, all of these things. So the, the, those policies in the Inflation Act that Kamala Harris, who was the tying, she was the, the deciding vote mm. on that, uh, that stuff has been fundamental to driving inflation up in our country, which has pushed, pushed everything up, that pushed up interest rates, that, that killed the American dream, drove up housing costs, everything ties back to that. All right. Well, Governor Doug Bergen, we can't thank you enough. I know you made a Herculean effort to help us, and we are so grateful to you. Thank you for your insights. Thanks for coming back on the show, sir. We appreciate it.